Halloween is just around the corner and I've picked out some spooky favorites from Scarlet Lane Brewery to share with you today on Drinking With Beers. Just to give you a little background, Scarlet Lane Brewery has been dubbed the official beer of horror, and they have affinity for all things macabre. They deliver their beer out of a hearse, and they even pour their magic potions out of a casket at beer festivals. Not a cask, a casket. Now that is a casket I'd like to be buried in. And while they pride themselves on being different, did you know that they are also different for the fact that they are one of the first female-owned breweries in Indiana? Head brewer and CEO Elise Lane opened Scarlet Lane in 2014, paving the way for females in the industry by operating as a majority-owned female entity. And in next week's video, you'll get a chance to meet Elise as she tells us her story and tells us a little more about the beer that started it all, her signature Dorian Stout. So make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss next week's video. So the beer I chose to share with you today from Scarlet Lane Brewery is the Sammy Terry Kolsch, the Katrina, which is a brown ale brewed with brown sugar and cinnamon, and then the famous Dorian Stout. So if you purchase these beers to drink along with me, go ahead and grab yourself a glass and we'll get started. So first, we'll start with the Sammy Terry Kolsch. This is a Kolsch, this is a Kolsch that has been brewed with citra hops and a touch of flesh and blood. <laughs> okay, it's not really flesh and blood. I'll tell you what it is in just a bit. Look at that beautiful pour. So the base of this beer is a Kolsch, and Kolsch is a style of beer that originates in Germany. And it's actually a hybrid beer, meaning that it is both lager and ale. And this is due to the fact that it is fermented with lager yeast, but at warmer ale temperatures. So what you end up with is a beer that is light and crisp like a lager, but has slightly more complexities as you would find in an ale. And with Kolsch, you're gonna get a little bit more, those complexities come out as more fruity flavors. So you're gonna get more like apple and pear. So Sammy Terry is brewed with citra hops. So it's gonna have those citrus notes and it's gonna have a little bit more bitterness than you would find in a traditional Kolsch. As I drink this, I find that the hop characteristics sort of have this ebb and flow with the malt characteristics. So as when I first take a sip, I get mostly those hop characteristics, that citrus on the front end, and then it sort of melts into this soft bed of, of malts. And then, there it is, on the back end, the hops come back to surprise me at the end. It's kind of like a good scary movie or a psychological thriller that you know, starts out with that intense moment that makes you go, ah! I mean, not that this movie baby went, ah! But it starts out with this sort of thrilling moment. And then it lays you down kind of sets you down gently, only to build the suspense up to that next intense, thrilling moment. And then it has that surprise twist at the end. So the flesh and blood part of this beer. Okay, no flesh and blood obviously was used in the making of this product. It is actually dragon fruit, which is a tropical fruit that exhibits sort of this mixed combo between kiwi and pear. So I really feel like the dragon fruit amps up those pear flavors that are already in the Kolsch. Here's a fun fact. Sammy Terry Kolsch was named after Sammy Terry, who was a famous TV horror host from Indianapolis who was created and played by Bob Carter. And if you say Sammy Terry really fast, Sammy Terry, you'll find that it's actually a pun on the word cemetery. Sammy Terry has been haunting Indiana's airwaves for decades. At its height, the show, called Nightmare Theater, played regularly in the 1960s and 70s on a local TV station, WTTV. The show featured two horror films that usually included a classic horror movie, as well as a vintage favorite, sometimes dating all the way back to the 1930s. And in between commercial breaks, Sammy Terry, along with his pet rubber spider, George, would offer commentary and have playful banter with the audience. Sadly, Bob Carter passed away in 2013, but his son, Mark Carter, has carried on the legacy of Sammy Terry. 
And Elise mentioned to me while I was interviewing her and trying the Samuteri for the first time at the brewery that Scarlet Lane is so thrilled to partner with a horror icon that has meant so much to horror fans throughout time. Next on the list, <laughs> next on the list is Katrina. This is a brown ale that is brewed with brown sugar and cinnamon. Did you guys know that there are different types of cinnamon? I had no idea. I didn't even know that cinnamon came from bark until I was at a market in Vietnam. There was this lady who just had all of this tree bark laid out over a blanket. And at first I'm like, she's selling tree bark? Okay, but it was kind of interesting. I was curious and I walked over, she broke off a piece of the bark and handed it to me and motioned for me to eat it. And I was like, okay, I've never eaten tree bark before. At least I didn't realize I've eaten tree bark before, but I, I tried it, I put it in my mouth and immediately I recognized it as being cinnamon. And I was like, I had no idea that cinnamon was just tree bark. But you know, that's why we travel, isn't it? So we can learn things like, where does cinnamon come from? So anyway, Katrina uses three, three types of cinnamon. <laughs> three types. We have Ceylon from Sri Lanka, which has a mild earthy profile. Then there's Kazia from Indonesia, which has a sweet profile. And then finally, Kazia from Saigon in Vietnam, which I'm pretty sure is the bark that I tried, um, which has a spicy characteristic. But the story doesn't end there. Each of the cinnamon spices represents three enchanting female figures. First is Katrina Van Tassel from Sleepy Hollow, who is the beautiful daughter of the richest man in town, who's just kind of a big flirt and likes to play with men's hearts. Then there is La Katrina, who is the elegant skeleton lady who is associated with Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead. And it is a time to remember those loved ones who have passed on, to the next life. It's a time to pray and remember and celebrate those lives. Katrina has become a cultural icon in Mexico representing the acceptance of death. And the third is Scarlet Lane's own Katrina who is an enchantress who arose from varying circumstances. She conjures sweet, spicy, and warm earthy notes to bring you an enticing experience. And once you are under her spell, she will guide you through crisp evenings and grand memories. So now that you know what these three spices represent, go ahead and give it a whiff. It's definitely a bouquet full of delightful spice notes and maybe a dash of magic. So this is a brown ale, so it's gonna be more malt forward. You're not gonna get too much bitterness or hop characteristics. It's there kind of more just to support that, that malt and prevent it from being too sweet. And then it also, of course, has that brown sugar, which also contributes to the sweetness. Give it a taste. I'm getting, I'm definitely getting like some graham cracker, toast, and some, some dark chocolate. And those would be from the malts. So I am noticing that this beer finish is dry, which I love because it leaves you wanting more. And then it's also light in body. It's not too heavy, so it's not gonna weigh you down, which is good, you know, in case you, you know, need to go fly off on a broomstick. You could easily do that after having a bottle of Katrina. This beer will definitely cast a spell on you. Last on the list is Dorian Stout. This is the beer that started it all. It is Elise's signature beer over at Scarlet Lane. And I'm actually gonna let her tell you more about the Dorian and her story in next week's special Halloween edition. So make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss the video. So basically Dorian comes in a variety of flavors, but it's always going to be a stout. So it's going to have some roasted coffee characteristics as well as some dark chocolate. And that comes from the malts. Elise also likes to use a lot of oatmeal in the grain bill. So it's gonna give it some additional sweetness as well as a silky texture. So this particular Dorian has those coffee characteristics and then it has the addition of espresso. So this is the Dorian espresso and the espresso comes from a local a coffee company. You've probably heard of it. It comes from Tinker Coffee Company. So as I mentioned, the Dorian comes in a variety of flavors. The original Dorian is the coconut stout 
And this is Elise's signature beer. It's probably her most famous. I actually remember having it back around the time when they first opened in 2014. And I had a sip of it and I remember just the taste of it was just very pleasant and it had that silky texture and I hadn't really ever tried anything like that before. And it really left an impression on me and I, so I asked about it and I found out that it was a local brewer who happened to be a woman. And that, you know, while I didn't end up going into brewing or opening a brewery like Elise did, it really kind of changed my perspective and helped me to realize that, wow, there is space in the beer world for women too. And I think that is so neat how, you know, as women get more involved in the industry, how that really opens doors for other women. So, um, you know, in next week's video, we'll get to dive a little bit deeper into the Dorian style. We'll get to chat with Elise. She's gonna tell us a little bit more about her story of how she came into brewing and how she opened Scarlet Lane. And she's gonna talk more about the Dorian Stout. And uh, I'm so excited for you guys to get to meet her and learn her story. So make sure you are subscribed and also share this video with your beer loving friends. I'm Amy Beers, thanks for drinking with me and until next time, cheers.